Hello everyone and welcome to lecture 14 of uh, basic electrical circuits. In the previous two lectures, we looked at uh, two port uh, parameters, how to calculate them for uh, different kinds of circuits. So, you should now be able to calculate two port parameters of any resistive circuits or any linear circuit actually. And uh, if you have a purely resistive circuit, because of reciprocity, there will always be some uh, relationship between parameter 2 1 and parameter 1 2. Okay? Now, uh, in this lecture, what we will do is to go to a different topic, namely that of uh, op amps or operational amplifiers, which are a very, very useful circuit block uh, in, uh, in designing, I mean, and they are used in uh, designing various kinds of electrical circuits. Okay? Now, what is an amp operational amplifier? It is just a voltage controlled voltage source and because it is a block that is used so often, it has a symbol of its own which is given by this. This is really equivalent to, I will call this in P for positive inputs, in M for negative input and out and this is equivalent to in P and in M and a voltage controlled voltage source. Okay. And what does the voltage controlled voltage source give out? It gives a voltage proportional to this and it is multiplied by a very large gain. Okay. In odd times Vx. So, the output voltage here will be A0 times Vx, where Vx is this voltage measured with this polarity. Okay? So, this is, a, this is an operational amplifier and in this course in particular, we will not worry uh, too much about the internal details of the op amp or any non-ideal feature. We will be dealing mostly with what is known as an ideal op amp. And what is an ideal op amp? An ideal op amp is one in which A0 tends to infinity. Okay? We will later see why this is a very useful property. Is this okay? Any questions so far? I just defined the op amp as a voltage controlled voltage source. Okay, so now uh, what we'll do is to look at uh, certain techniques of uh, circuit analysis when op amps are present. Okay. Now, because an op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source, you can uh, simply replace the op amp by a VCVS of appropriate gain and then use it. Okay? So,
this is certainly possible okay now uh, what we want to do is to see in case of an ideal op amp if uh, a simpler method of analysis can be found okay Now, for this, I am going to take a circuit uh, example of uh, an example of a circuit that uses op amps, and that turns out to be an amplifier, a kind of amplifier which is used very often. It is known as a non inverting amplifier. Okay. And the circuit for that is given by something like this. Okay. Where this is the input voltage. Now, this symbol means ground and these are all connected together. Sometimes just to avoid clutter in the uh, schematic, you take the reference node of the circuit and you do not explicitly connect them together, but this means that this is connected to this. Okay, And whenever we say that there is a voltage at some node without specifying two nodes, it is implied that it is with respect to the reference node. Okay, So, V i is applied between this node and the reference node and VO is obtained between the output node and the reference node. Okay? And let us say this is some resistor R2 and this is some resistor R1. Okay? Now, uh, First of all, let us assume that the op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source and analyze this. Okay? So, that you should be able to uh, do this by assuming some voltage Vx here and that means that a voltage A0 Vx appears over there. Okay? Now, since this is the first op amp circuit we are analyzing, I am going to uh, rewrite the circuit with the voltage controlled voltage source. Okay. So, this is a voltage control voltage source of A0 Vx, where Vx is the voltage between that node and that node. Okay. Is this clear? Any questions about the circuit itself? Any questions about the circuit? Okay, then uh, please try to answer this question. If the voltage at this node is V0, what is the voltage at this node? Okay, that is at the junction of R1 or R2, what is the voltage? Please try and answer this uh, question.
Anyone? The voltage at this node, if uh, the voltage here is V0. So it's very easy to uh, calculate this. The current in this uh, these two resistors is the same because this is connected to an open circuit and no current is going there. Okay, so this current here is V naught by R one plus R two. Okay, so R one and R two are in series, and the voltage across this is this current times R one. So it is V naught R one by R one plus R two. Okay. Then, <clears throat> what is the value of V x? That's the voltage between this node, which has a voltage of V i, and this node, which has a voltage of V naught R one by R one plus R two. Okay. So V x equals V i minus V naught R one by R one plus R two. Okay. And here we see that this voltage-controlled voltage source is giving a value of E naught V x, and that is the actual output voltage V naught. Okay, so we have defined V naught to be the output voltage of the op-amp, which is E naught times V x. Okay. So from these we can calculate the output voltage, which is A naught times V x, which in turn is A naught V i minus V naught R one by R one plus R two. So if I take this term to the other side i will get v not plus v not a not r1 by r1 plus r2 equals a not times vi okay so the gain of the circuit v not by vi Can be written as a naught okay a naught divided by one plus a naught times this ratio of resistors R one by R one plus R two okay now this can uh, be written in a number of different ways. If I uh, take this term to the numerator, I will get R one plus R two by R one times A naught A naught plus R one plus R two by R one, okay, and it can also be written as R one plus R two divided by R one times one by one plus one by a naught R one plus R two by R one, okay. so the gain can be written in a number of uh, these forms but uh, like i said earlier the important thing is the op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source with a gain a not that is very large a not tends to infinity okay so that is the condition under which we should calculate the gain of this circuit
okay so as a not tends to infinity you can very easily see that this term disappears and the gain becomes r1 plus r2 by r1 or 1 plus r2 by r1 okay so this is really the uh, virtue of using an op amp which is just a voltage controlled voltage source with a very large gain if the gain is very large but not infinite which is what it is going to be in uh, real life the uh, gain v0 by vi will be very close to 1 plus r2 by r1 but not exactly 1, 1 plus r2 by r1 okay so the important thing is that the gain is independent of a not if a not is very large okay so if a not is very large the second term in the denominator is much smaller than one and can be ignored completely okay so this entire thing becomes one and v not by vi will be r1 plus r2 by r1 okay any questions about this So as uh, a not tends to infinity, the gain of the amplifier v not by vi, which is r one plus r two by r one times this entire thing. Okay, this is what we derived previously using circuit analysis. This uh, becomes r one plus r two divided by r one because this term here, this tends to zero if a not tends to infinity. So even if a not is not infinity but a very large number. Okay, what happens is this term becomes quite, uh, quite small. Okay, so we'll have a gain of one plus r two by r one. So the point is the gain is independent of a naught if a naught is very large. Now this is really the reason why op amps are used. It turns out that uh, when you make these control sources. Uh, these use uh, devices called transistors, which you will uh, later encounter in your uh, 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 in some other course on electronics. Okay, if you realize a gain, the value of the gain cannot be very accurately set usually. Okay, so there is difficulty in setting the value of gain accurately. So uh, now, what you do is instead of uh, for to in order to realize an accurate gain. What you do is you realize a very large gain using transistors. Now, even if it is not very accurate, what happens is that uh, as long as the gain is very large, this term disappears, and you have a gain that is accurately defined by using resistors. Okay. I hope that is clear. Also. Let me copy over this circuit. So the output voltage V naught, like I said, it is 
R1 plus R2 by R1 times 1 by 1 plus 1 by A0 R1 plus R2 by R1 times Vi that is the gain times Vi and this Vx okay so if you calculate what was Vx Vx is nothing but Vi minus V0 R1 by R1 plus R2 okay where V0 is this whole thing so it is Vi minus 1 by 1 plus 1 over A0 R1 plus R2 by R1 times Vi okay so if you evaluate this this comes out to be 1 by A0 R1 plus R2 by R1 1 plus 1 by A0 R1 plus R2 by R1 times Vi okay so now uh, the point is that as A0 tends to infinity which really means a very large A0 in practice this becomes R1 plus R2 by R1 times Vi or 1 plus R2 by R1 times Vi okay and this becomes 0 okay that is A0 is in the denominator here so this uh, this term becomes 0 okay so this is the feature of an ideal op amp that as A0 tends to infinity the input voltage of the op amp tends to 0 now it is not exactly 0 for any finite value of A0 okay so if a0 is infinite uh, the value of vx tends to zero so this gives us a more efficient uh, way of analyzing uh, op amp circuits okay so instead of substituting a voltage control voltage source in place of the op amp that will certainly work you can directly substitute these two voltages to be equal to zero okay it is uh, so that's a uh, basically a shortcut for analyzing op amp circuits okay so let's do that so it turns out that basically in an ideal op amp uh, rather let me say in a circuit containing ideal op amps Okay, uh, looks like uh, somehow the Windows journal shut down. So, in a circuit, what I was saying was in a circuit containing ideal op amps under certain conditions, I am going to elaborate what they are. These conditions are very necessary. The input voltage of the op amp equals 0. Okay. So, what I mean is that this Vx here, this will be 0 if the op amp is ideal. Okay.
So this gives us a shortcut for uh, analyzing circuits with ideal op amps. Okay. So this business of Vx being equal to zero, this is known as a virtual short circuit. Okay. So if you have a short circuit, the voltage between, uh, if you have a short circuit between two points, the voltage between them will be zero. Okay. And any current can flow through the short circuit. In this case, it is slightly different. It is a virtual short circuit. The voltage between these two points will be zero, but no current will flow between them. Okay. So no current will go into the op amp and then come back to this wire. So that's why this is known as a virtual short circuit. Okay. So this basically is also uh, called as the inputs of the op amp being virtually shorted to each other. Okay. So virtually shorted means that this means that the voltage across them is zero but no current flows into the open okay so it's not a short circuit it's just a virtual short circuit okay now let's see how this idea simplifies the analysis of op amp circuits so i'll take the same circuit instead of uh, using a voltage controlled voltage source in place of the op amp I will just use the virtual short circuit concept and figure out what the output is going to be. Okay. So virtual short circuit, what it says is that between these two, we have zero volts. Okay. So this means that is the screen not visible? Is there a problem? So there is a question why current does not flow in case of virtual short circuit. Okay. Now the voltage between these two is zero because A naught is infinity. It's not because the wire is connecting them. Okay. If you go back to the picture with the control source, it becomes even more clear. Okay. So you see that this wire, it's going nowhere. There is no path for current to flow. Similarly in this, there is no path for the current to flow. But there is a, a virtual short between these two because Vx tends to zero as A0 tends to infinity. Okay. So this is uh, what I mean is there is a so virtual short. It's not a real short. There is no wire connecting between these two. In that case, a current can flow. Here, the current cannot flow into this wire regardless of the value of A0. Right? This wire is just an open circuit here. No current will flow into the op amp. But because A0 tends to infinity, this voltage becomes zero. So that's why it's a virtual short and not a real short. Okay.
So now uh, let's try to reanalyze this circuit using the concept of the virtual short. Okay. So if there is zero volt between these two uh, nodes, what is the voltage at this node? What is the voltage at that node? So if there is a virtual short between the inputs of the op amp, what is the voltage at this highlighted node? I will uh, highlight it again, this node. So, uh, there is a question here, how is the gain infinite? Now, that is the assumption we are using, okay. We will design the, uh, we will design the op amp to have a gain of infinity, okay. Now, in reality, of course, you will never be able to reach infinite. You will reach a very large number, okay. So, you can think of this infinity as an approximation to a gain that is very large, okay. Is that fine? So what is the voltage here at the highlighted node in terms of the input voltage VI? I think there is a, a problem here, but uh, others are probably able to see the writings. There is, Anu, are you not able to see the writing? How about others? Anybody else has this problem of uh, not being able to see the writing? Now, I think uh, maybe the problem is on your side. Perhaps you can quickly close the browser and reopen it. Perhaps it will be okay. So now, uh, hopefully the audio is also uh, clear now. Uh, what I was asking was, what is the voltage at this node in terms of VI? Okay. So if this is a virtual short, that is, these two have the same voltage, it means that clearly this node also has to have the voltage of Vi, okay. So the voltage here equals Vi. Now, we also saw earlier that the current going here this way is zero, okay. So, clearly, if uh, there is V0 here, the voltage at this point given by the voltage divided formula is V0 R1 by R1 plus R2, okay. So, what I have done is to determine the voltage of this uh, through two different ways. One is by observing that this is a virtual short, it has to be equal to Vi. 
and another one is observing that the current here is zero. So if this point is V naught, this point has to be V naught uh, times R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So clearly, uh, whatever we derive for the same node from two different uh, methods has to be equal to each other. So that means that V naught times R1 by R1 plus R2 equals Vi. Okay. Or V naught equals Vi times R1 plus R2 by R1 or Vi times 1 plus R2 by R1. Okay. So I hope this part is clear. In this case, I did not assume that the op amp was a virtual, sorry, voltage controlled voltage source with a gain of A0. I assume that the op amp offers a virtual short between its inputs. Okay. So when it's a virtual short, we can immediately determine that the voltage here is Vi. It has to be equal to what you determine from the output, which is V0 times R1 by R1 plus R2. So by manipulating this, we see that the output is input times some gain, which is 1 plus R2 by R1. Okay. And that 1 plus R2 by R1 is exactly the gain we derived when A0 is very large. Okay. So when the op-amp is ideal, you can use this shortcut to analyze the circuit. Is this okay? Any questions? And op-amp is nothing but a voltage controlled uh, voltage source with a very, very large gain. The whole point is you make the gain very large. It doesn't have to be very precise, but the gain value will not depend very much on gain. Okay. So for instance, you can make the gain, uh, let's say 10,000, but uh, let's say for various reasons, usually when the temperature changes and so on, the gain will change. It could change all the way from 10,000 to 15,000 or 5,000, which is a very big change. Okay. But as long as A0 is very large, the gain will not change all that much. Okay. Any questions? Okay, then let's move on uh, with the lecture. So, which part is not clearly understood? So, which part would you like me to explain again? Okay, let's uh, move on with the lecture. Now we can take another op amp circuit.
Well, let me do that. Okay. So let's see uh, if it becomes clear after we uh, do this circuit. Okay, so this is another circuit using op amps, and now between these two nodes, uh, there is a virtual short. Okay, so that means that so this point is at zero volts. So this point is also at zero volts. Okay. So remember, in case of an ideal op amp, there is a virtual short between these two points. Okay, but no current flows into the op amp. Okay, so in this case also, no current flows into the op amp. So now, uh, because this is at uh, zero volts, what is the current through R1? Please try to answer this. What is the current through R1? So clearly, it is equal to V i by R one. Okay. So if we have V i uh, across the resistor, and the current is V i by R one. Now. I will not be able to take questions by audio. Any questions you have, please uh, type it into the chat window. Okay. Now, uh, this current, it can go either into the op amp or into R2. Now, we know that no current goes into the op amp. Okay. So, it will go into R2. Now, what is the voltage drop across R2? in this polarity. So, let me mark that here. What is that voltage across R2? Yeah, it is equal to V0, but in terms of Vi, what is the voltage? No, the voltage is not infinite. 
the, on the right side you have v naught on the left side we have zero volts so the voltage across it is definitely v naught but you also know the current that is flowing through it so you can uh, try and figure out the voltage across it what is it yeah that's correct so So clearly, uh, this current is flowing that way. So this current times R2 will be the voltage drop with the left side positive. But here I have defined it with the right side positive. So the voltage equals V0, which is minus R2 times Vi by R1, or V0 is minus R2 by R1 times Vi. Okay, so this is the gain. Okay, and because, uh, so this is another uh, amplifier that is a classic amplifier topology using pop amps and we analyzed it by assuming the virtual short between the inputs of the op amp, okay. Any questions? Any questions about the circuit? So there is a question, is there any chance to change the gain of the op amp by putting a resistor at the non-inverting terminal? Okay. Now we will see the condition under which uh, the op amp will behave like a virtual short, the op amp inputs. And also just to be precise, it is not the gain of the op amp that is changing, okay. The gain of the op amp is A0 which is assumed to be tending to infinity. It is the gain of the circuit which is built using the op amp, okay. So the gain of the op amp is A0 and that is fixed. There is another question why feedback is used in op amps. Now it is neg a particular type of feedback that is negative feedback that will create the virtual short. Now in this very basic course we will not go into depths of uh, negative feedback. Okay, I will just tell you that uh, there has to be negative feedback and how to uh, find it. Okay, how to find uh, whether there is negative feedback or not. Now uh, what I meant was the answer to earlier question. Now, I will uh, go through the conditions under which the op amp input will behave like a virtual short, okay. Now the, the resistor, it could be at the non-inverting terminal also, but uh, we have to see, it depends on the topology. There are numerous topologies of uh, op amp circuits and some of them have resistors only to the inverting terminal, some of them to both inverting and non-inverting terminals, okay. And also, uh, just to be precise, it is not the gain of the op amp that is being changed, okay. It is the gain of the overall circuit. The gain of the op amp is A0 and it is fixed and A0 tends to infinity in an ideal op amp.
So we have looked at uh, two op amp circuits. And in this circuit, V0 by Vi equals 1 plus R2 by R1. And we have this other circuit. V0 by Vi equals minus R2 by R1. Now, because uh, the gain of the circuit on the left side is positive, it is known as a non-inverting amplifier. Okay, And because the gain of the circuit on the right side is negative, this is known as an inverting amplifier. Okay. So, these are uh, classic op amp circuits and by the way, these are true when the op amp is ideal, which means A0 tends to infinity. If uh, A0 is uh, less than infinity, then A0 will appear in the gain, uh, expression for the gain, but uh, as long as A0 is very large, the gain will be approximately equal to 1 plus R2 by R1. Similarly, uh, the gain of the inverting amplifier will be minus R2 by R1. Okay. In fact, I encourage you to replace the op amp by the control source in the inverting amplifier and calculate the gain. Okay. So, you can take it up as an exercise. So, if you replace this op amp with a voltage control voltage source, okay, because uh, plus is on the bottom and minus is on the top, Vx and this will be A0 times Vx with this polarity. Okay, so please analyze this circuit. It will be a general practice for uh, circuit analysis as well as then you take the limit of uh, A naught tending to infinity and you should get the same answer as what we got by assuming that the op amp input is a virtual short. Okay. Okay. Is this fine? Now, there is another question. What is the difference between neutral and grounding? Now, this is completely outside the scope of uh, the basic electrical uh, circuits. This has to do with uh, uh, safety and uh, issues like that. The grounding is uh, the ground wire is something that the ground wire in the household supply is a wire that is actually connected to the earth so that and the neutral is neutral is really what is connected to earth and there should be a very small uh, voltage difference between these two so that you don't have uh, electrical shocks when you accidentally touch electrical equipment and so on but we can't deal with this here in detail so you will have to go through uh, other courses, mainly the ones that deal with uh, power circuits for to understand this. But the concept is quite uh, simple and you can also probably refer to some standard textbooks to find out. Okay.
Now I said that. So basically, the rules for uh, analyzing the ideal op-amp circuits can be written down. First of all, what is an ideal op-amp? This is an op-amp. It's a voltage control voltage source with a gain A0. Okay. And the current going into the op-amp terminals is zero. Okay. And an ideal op-amp means that the gain tends to infinity. Okay. So to analyze ideal op-amp circuits, you can use the methods we used earlier, but you cannot write KCL at the op amp output. Okay, this is because you don't know how much current is going into the op amp. Instead, what you can uh, do is to write the virtual short equation at the op amp input. Okay, so that is the two inputs of the op amp have zero voltage between them. Okay. Now, I said that this virtual short condition is true only under certain conditions. So, virtual short uh, condition or rather, uh, let me write it as op amp inputs are virtually shorted under certain conditions and that condition is only if the op amp is in negative feedback. Okay. So, this is a very, very, very important condition. You cannot assume that uh, the op amp inputs are virtually shorted in any circuit, Okay, in every circuit. The op amp has to be in uh, uh, negative feedback in order for the op amp inputs to be virtually shorted. Okay. I will tell you what this means. Okay, let me by taking the two examples. Let me take the non-inverting amplifier first. Okay, so let me take this circuit. Now, what I will do is, I will null the input, okay. That is, I will set Vi equal to 0. So, that means that I basically short circuit this to ground. 
okay then i will uh, identify the input voltage vx and the output voltage v0 of the op amp in this case v0 is the output voltage of the circuit also okay but uh, as a procedure you just identify vx with the appropriate polarity that is plus here and the minus there okay let me call this v out this is really the output of the op amp in this particular circuit it is also the output of the circuit okay you can have more than one op amp in a circuit vx and v out of the op amp okay so then what you do is you just remove the op amp okay let's say remove this op amp and then you apply a test voltage to wherever the op amp output was okay this is we test okay i just connected there i remove the op amp and instead of the op amp's output wherever the output was i connect a voltage source we test okay apply a voltage test voltage we test at the op amp output okay then you calculate vx vx has already been identified okay it is basically the input of the op amp when the op amp was present in the circuit so now vx will be because this is a linear circuit and in general any such circuit you take will be a linear circuit vx will be some number times v test okay and this number has to be negative for the op amp to be in negative feedback okay this is the procedure let me go over it once again i first null the input because uh, when i say the op amp is in feedback i am only interested in how much of the op amp's output comes back to the input that is the meaning of feedback if no part of the output comes back to the input there is no feedback at all okay so if some part of it comes back to the input there is feedback that is what i am trying to determine here so that's why i am not interested in the input voltage itself the input voltage to the circuit i am only interested in how much of the op amp's output comes back to its own input so i first null the input in this case that means that i set the uh, input voltage to zero uh, that is i short the input to ground okay then i identify the input and output voltages of the op amp that is vx with this polarity that is important and v out is the output of this op amp with respect to ground okay then i just remove the op amp and instead of the op amp i connect a voltage source v test wherever the op amp's output was okay so then i calculate vx in this new circuit with the op amp removed and this new voltage source uh, inserted okay so this is just for uh, testing the circuit we test is some arbitrary voltage now because this is a linear circuit vx will be some number times v test it has to be okay so vx will be some number times v test and that number has to be smaller than 0 that is that number has to be negative the multiplying factor if it is negative then this op amp in the original circuit is a negative feedback okay so what it means is vx has a contribution due to v out okay that we tested by applying this v test in place of v out now that contribution is negative if this number is negative okay 
So that is the meaning of the op amp being in negative feedback. We will test it out for this circuit. As I mentioned earlier, I am unable to take questions by audio. Please ask all your questions uh, on the chat window. Okay, is the procedure clear? So let's try it for this circuit. That is, I have removed the op amp, I have identified uh, Vx and Vout, and then I removed the op amp and I applied V test here. Okay, so please now calculate the voltage that appears here. What is the voltage that appears there? Please let me know the answer. The voltage that appears at this node. See, Vx is the difference between this upper node and this one. And this node is at ground, that is 0 volts. So I have to find the voltage of this node. So what is the voltage that appears there? What is the voltage that appears there at the junction of R1 and R2 due to V test? That's right. Clearly, V test is applied to this voltage divider. So, this voltage is nothing but V test R1 by R1 plus R2, okay, the voltage divider times V test, okay. So, what is the value of Vx then? What is the value of Vx? Please mind the polarity of Vx. So it is not minus V test, but minus of the voltage that appears here. So Vx will be minus V test times, or let me write it uh, like this, minus R1 by R1 plus R2 times V test. Okay. So it is some number uh, times V test, and that number is negative. Okay. By the way, uh, there was some answer saying both will be in same potential. I am not sure which both are being referred to. These two, if we are talking about this node and that node, they will certainly not be at the same potential in this circuit. Okay, They will be at the same potential in the circuit when the op amp is present and the op amp has negative feedback. This circuit does not have the op amp. So, this and that will certainly not be at the same potential. Okay, So, the voltage Vx is minus R1 by R1 plus R2 times V test. It is a negative number times V test. So, this op amp here, this op amp is in negative feedback. Okay. So, the reason that is very important is that only with negative feedback do you get the virtual short and the desired function that you want to implement. Okay. So, there is another question 
uh, what are the assumptions made in an ideal op amp? The assumptions made are simply that a naught equals infinity. Okay, that will take care of everything else. Okay, now here if you look at it, I defined a naught. I said a naught is infinity. Now I also said i equals zero. Now actually that's not a separate assumption. If you take any circuit uh, with the op amp, even if there is a resistance between these two points, if a naught becomes infinity. It becomes an ideal op amp. Now, for simplicity, what I'll assume is that it's a voltage controlled voltage source. That is, no current is flowing here, and this is an ideal voltage controlled voltage source, and the value of A naught is infinite. Okay, so I hope that is clear. The essential uh, assumption for uh, an ideal op amp is that the gain has to be infinite. Okay. Now the reason this is important is the following. So let me copy over this circuit again. So let me uh, put the input back here. Okay. Now, in this case, in the second case, let me do this. Let me make the lower one plus and the upper one minus. Okay. Now, the point is that if you calculate this voltage from the output side, okay, this is V naught, and this point will be. V naught times R1 by R1 plus R2. Here also it will be V naught times R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay, so they will be exactly the same as each other, obviously. Now also, if I assume ideal uh, op amp and say that it is virtually shorted, okay, this voltage is the same as that voltage. So that means that from the input side, this will be vi and here also it will be vi if i assume that there is a virtual short between these two terminals okay so uh, whether i use the circuit on the left side or the circuit on the right side i get the same relationship i get vi equals v not uh, times r1 by r1 plus r2 or v not equals vi times r1 plus r2 by r1 Okay, so if I blindly apply the virtual short concept, that's what I will get. But this circuit is very different from this, and in fact, it will not work at all. Okay, so this circuit will not work. And the reason is that we can look at uh, the feedback in this particular circuit. Okay, so what I'll do is let me copy over this. And I have to null the input. I will do that. I want to see whether it is in negative feedback. Okay. I null the input and I identify the input and output of the op amp. Remember, Vx is now defined like this. Okay. Because plus sign is on the bottom side. And I remove the op amp. Okay. Then I apply V test. So what happens at this point? I'll get V test times R1 by R1 plus R2. And if you calculate the value of Vx in this circuit, it is equal to the voltage at this node. Okay, because of the polarity. Whereas previously, for this circuit, Vx was negative of the voltage here. Okay, so the voltage here was V not R1 by R1 plus R2. That part is the same as now, but this Vx was negative of that. Whereas now, 
Vx is equal to R1 by R1 plus R2 times V test. Okay, so it's a positive number times V test. So that means that in this circuit, I mean this op amp. is in positive feedback okay so if it's in positive feedback then uh, this virtual short assumption simply does not apply okay is this clear so it's an extremely important thing the virtual short uh, concept provides a uh, provides an easy way to analyze uh, circuits containing an ideal op amp, but it has to be applied with care. You have to check separately that the op amp is in negative feedback, and the way to do that is given by this series of steps I described earlier. You null the input because this has nothing to do with the input. Feedback refers to what fraction of the op amp's output comes back to its own input. Okay, you identify Vx and Vout of the op amp, whichever op amp you want to find uh, the feedback for. Okay, then you remove the op amp. In place of the op amp's output, you apply a test voltage V test. And then now you have a, basically a linear circuit which you can analyze and find the input voltage Vx of the op amp. Okay, so this Vx of the op amp will be some uh, uh, number times V test. And that number, if it is smaller than zero, the op amp is a negative feedback, then uh, the virtual short assumption is valid. If it is greater than zero, it's in positive feedback. You cannot assume virtual short. If it is equal to zero, also there is no uh, feedback at all, and this virtual short is not valid. Okay. So there is another question: what will happen if we use positive feedback? Okay, so that again we will not get into in this course. What is going to happen is that uh, there will be no virtual short, that is for sure. And the way we have defined it, the op amp uh, is a voltage controlled voltage source and its output voltage can be any value. It depends on the input voltage. In reality, uh, when you make a real op amp, the output of the op amp will have some limits, okay, which depends on the supply voltage. If you operate the op amp from 10 volts, the output cannot go beyond 10 volts and so on. So it will end up uh, going and getting stuck to either the maximum limit or the minimum limit on its output voltage. Okay, so that's what is going to happen to the op amp if you use it in positive feedback. Okay. Any other questions? So similarly, if we look at the inverting amplifier, Okay, again we can uh, apply the same algorithm. Okay, so first I null the input, that means that I short this to ground, that is Vi equals 0. Okay, so then I remove the op amp. And apply V test. Sorry, I also had to identify. Let me remove this. Before coming to this step, I had to identify the input voltage Vx and the output voltage Vout of the op amp. Okay.
Then I remove the op amp and apply. We test to the output of the op amp. Okay. So what is the voltage that appears here in this circuit? What is the voltage that appears at this node? Please uh, find this. What is the voltage that appears there? The voltage that appears there is V test times R1 by R1 plus R2. Okay. So the value of Vx is the negative of this because of its polarity. So this will be minus R1 by R1 plus R2 times V test. So this means that this is okay. The op amp here is in negative feedback okay now if i interchange the plus and minus signs of the op amp it will be in positive feedback and what we discussed so far will not be applicable anyone anymore okay so any questions about op amp circuits what we learned was uh, two popular circuits of the op amp which are the inverting amplifier and the non inverting amplifier and also, if in an op amp, uh, the op amp is a voltage controlled voltage source with a very large gain. So, if the gain is very large, then the gain of the circuit, the gain of the amplifier will not depend so much on the op amp's gain. Okay. So, there are two gains that we talked about here the V0 by VI of this circuit, the amplifier that you make, and also the gain of the op amp, that is, the gain of the voltage controlled voltage source which is inside the op amp. Okay. So, as long as that is very large, the gain of the circuit does not depend on this value A0. Okay? And an ideal op amp is where this A0 goes to infinity. Okay? That is the largest gain you can possibly have. Now, in that case, the analysis of op amp circuits becomes quite simple. You can uh, assume that the two inputs are virtually shorted. It is called virtual short because there is no wire that can conduct current between these two. So, the two voltages are equal, but no current flows between them. Okay? So, that is why it is called a virtual short. And using this virtual short concept, you can easily analyze op amp circuits. But the one thing you have to be very careful about is that the op amp has to be in negative feedback for you to be able to apply this virtual short concept. Okay? Otherwise, you simply cannot use that. So, that means that the op amp has to be hooked up with the correct polarity. I have shown the circuits with the correct polarity. I also showed you what happens if you have the wrong polarity. Okay? That is, in this case, if you have the upper one to be minus, lower one to be plus, then this op amp is in positive feedback and you cannot assume that these two are virtual shorts. Okay? So, if you use that, you will get the same formula as before for V0, but that will be completely wrong. Okay? So, is this clear? Any other questions?
So there is a suggestion for books on this topic. Uh, I will try to find, but uh, unfortunately, no book uh, deals with uh, the negative feedback aspect of it uh, explicitly like this. But just for op general op amp circuits and ideal op amp uh, circuits and so on, there are many books. Okay. So the book by Hayton Kemmerly or uh, Lynn and DiCarlo on uh, linear circuit analysis, you can use them. And there is a book by Sergio Franco on uh, op amps. The whole book is dedicated to op amps. It's full of circuits. You can uh, use that as well. Okay. or Sergio Franco on op amps, okay? There is an answer zero volt. I'm not sure to which question this is the answer. The next question is, if the voltage is zero on op amp, why are we calculating Vx, okay? Now, this is a way to calculate whether the op amp is in negative feedback or not. Okay, we are not trying to find out what the output voltage is in terms of the input voltage. We are trying to find out if the op amp has negative feedback around it. Okay, so it's not that the voltage on the op amp is zero, whatever that means. You uh, null the input source. Okay, you set VA equal to zero. You remove the op amp. You apply this V test. Basically, all you are trying to find out is the voltage here depends on the op amp output because of this connection R2, this feedback connection. Okay. Now, you have to find out whether Vx is related with a negative factor to V out or with a positive factor. That's what you are trying to find out. Okay. So, how much of the op amp's output affects its own input? That is the key to feedback. Okay. If the op amp's output is not connected back to its input, there is no feedback at all. Okay, if I remove this R2, then here, whatever the value of V test, the value of Vx will be zero. Then there is no feedback. But this V test influences Vx. So that means that when the op amp is really there, the op amp's output influences its input voltage. You are trying to find out whether it's a negative feedback or positive feedback. I hope that is clear. Uh, which book is most easy to understand? I think you have to read some uh, book and then see whether it's easy for you. Okay, so it depends on individual tastes. The first two books are about general circuit analysis. There is one chapter on op amps, whereas the third book is completely about op amps. So for all, all other aspects of uh, circuit analysis using dependent sources and so on, the first two books are quite good. They have lots of example problems and also uh, problems at the uh, end of each chapter. Okay. Okay then. So if there are no more questions, uh, I will see you next week. Okay. We will end the lecture here. Bye.